everyone, welcome to another video. So I've got some more deal stuff to show you. I wasn't going to show you this and then I was like, well, why wouldn't I? See, the reason is, do you remember a while ago I bought the 30 Montaigne bag and I got it in the kind of peachy nudie color and when I opened it on that video, actually, I was looking down at it as I opened it for the first time and there was this like huge scratch across the top, which, I don't know how badly it looks on camera, but let me just say, in real life, it was glaringly obvious. I, it was it was quite bad. Anyway, I ended up taking it back to Dior. I'm gonna take off this bracelet because it's rattling and it's being annoying. I went back to Dior. I ended up leaving the bag with them and it was with them for over a month. Seriously, if you want that bag, Dior are doing this at the moment and I've had so many of you commenting to me about this, about Dior's new marketing strategy of don't make many of any one thing and then I, I guess it kind of creates a demand, doesn't it? So after, after over a month or something crazy, it was over a month, it was maybe five or six weeks, I ended up going into Dior, I think, and I was gonna get my money back because by this point, Dior was saying, we don't actually know when we're gonna get any more of those bags back in. So you could be waiting for no one knows. By the way, I'm just gonna unbox the new bag as I talk to you. So then what I ended up doing is my friend who works at Dior did say to me that, I hope I'm okay to say this, Mind you though, if I was gonna own it and it happened, which it already did happen, I'd have told you anyway, but apparently it's quite common for those particular uh, 30 Montaigne bags in that material, and I don't know what it is, I think it's calf. I think um, they were saying that it's quite common that they've been scratching a bit, and I just thought to myself, I don't need any more bags that I can't relax with. Anyway, in a roundabout way, look, I exchanged it for the oblique version. I'd already, I was already kind of torn anyway, because when I first saw this bag, I I kind of felt that I preferred the, the pattern on this. Um, and I know that not all of you are into the monogram print and that's completely fine. Um, I think that the plain versions, see the thing is, it's not even that I can say I love one over the other. With the pinky sort of color that I had, I felt that I could have worn that with a lot more outfits, but I now know that the material, the, the leather is not resilient enough to be worn. So I ended up changing it for this because of my, my logic behind it is there's less leather to scratch. So the only leather on this is the bit that goes over the top, which also trims around the edge. And then it's got this on the back, which has got the 30 Montaigne on it. That's a pocket on the back there. And then on the top, you've got two loopholes which I had hoped would be big enough to fit. You know the Dior, what is it, like the guitar straps thing? I've got one of those and I thought that would be quite fun, but it's not big enough to fit through. This comes with its own strap, which looks like this. I'd seen this and the logic is with this strap, you could use it, although I'm not seeing how, because it's really long, but you can either wear the bag, carry the bag as a clutch, or you can wear this crossbody, or you can wear it shorten this strap and have it top handle or you can even just wear this as a belt but i'm looking at it thinking i don't know how because that's really big but the strap looks like this let me take off this sticky piece that's the end of it navy blue leather and it and then the holes on it there i've got metal um, rivets through them i've said you know like recently i think i said when i was talking about the you know the saddle bag in the denim which i'm loving by the way and i've been using that more than i had downfall because it's denim at the end of the day and i thought well denim with denim could look pretty weird or a bit overkill but then it actually works it really does and i love the look of that bag and um even though i hate the shape of it i still hate the shape of it i still look at it and i'm like god it's ugly but at the same time God, I love it. I mean, I think I think it's the material that it comes in that really did it for me. And, and again, I know a lot of you in the comments, I had loads of you, and that's what I love about on here. I love that you feel that you can just say what you think. Like in this day and age, we're sorry, I'm trying to get this on. In this day and age we're living in where everyone gets really offended by everything, I'm glad that you can just say, uh, 
I don't like it. Or I really love it. Am I doing this right? I feel like when it comes to putting logos on things or even not, I feel that Dior are doing a slightly more tasteful job of it at the moment. Again, let me know what you think. I know the logo thing's contentious because on one hand it's really trendy at the moment and on the other hand it's really, um, what's the word? It can be vulgar, I think. So anyway, that is the bag. I, so, and that was actually cheaper than the full on leather one. So I got a refund. I got a bit of a refund on that, which was good. And I cannot wait to use that. The other thing that I bought when I was in there, you know the Dior sneakers? They've got a few pairs out at the moment, haven't they? Well, the, specifically the ones that look like Converse. I had had my eye on a pair of these for a while. I hadn't had a chance to actually go and like really look at any of them. I went in, tried them on, loved the look of them. They're really comfortable as well. You can get these in so many different colors, different finishes. You can also get the oblique pattern on them. They've got a new pair for full kind of winter that goes slightly higher up the ankle. The size of these, in case you're thinking about getting these online, I normally take a size 40 and I've got a feeling, yeah, this is a 39. So in non-designer shoes, I'm always a 39, uh, which is a UK six. When it comes to designer, I always take a size 40, which is a UK seven. And most of the time, the 40s are a little bit on the large side, but I take them because if I'm on my feet all day, you know how your feet can swell up a bit? Well, I find that that's a really comfortable way of being able to wear a shoe. And actually, I, I was reading this thing that apparently the royal family do and quite a lot of celebrities do and notice this, okay? Apparently, members of the royal family like Kate or Meghan, when they go out on those days out where they've got to go and see people, have a look at some of the pictures and you will notice that at the, at the start of the day, their shoes fit them. At the end of the day, they're wearing shoes that are really too big and there's a really big gap at the back. I'm gonna try and put in some pictures here to demonstrate this. And apparently it's a strategy. They will buy one shoe in their size and one shoe that's a size bigger. Because when you're on your feet all day and you are wearing heels and your feet ache, it hurts you less if you're in a shoe that's a bit too big, apparently. So they buy two of the same shoe. Who knew? And then the final thing that I wanted to show you, you've kind of already seen this before, but several weeks back, do you remember that I went and bought a pair of trousers in Dior? Didn't plan on doing it at all. I'd gone to the store and they had this try on thing going on and I tried on this pair of trousers and they fitted like a glove, with the exception of the fact that when you buy in Dior, if you need it, they have a, a tailor on site and they will come and they will make the clothes bespoke to you and they don't charge you any extra for that, which they shouldn't because it's quite expensive clothes. Well, anyway, I bought this pair of trousers and I ended up having them altered a tiny bit to make the waist smaller because I wanted them to, I wanted them to like really fit tightly around the waist and I've got them back and I'm gonna try them on for you and show you them. The one thing that I really um, wish is these are dry clean only and I knew that when I bought them and I guess, I guess most quality clothing is dry clean only and I, I suppose it's so that you can't ruin it in the wash which is pretty easy a lot of the time. I would love it if I could find a pair of trousers that fit like this and that are this sort of quality that are machine washable because I would love to wear these to work, particularly in the winter because these are wool. So they're really quite warm when you wear them, but they're very flattering. And they're the kind of thing that when I was in the shop with Dior, I tried it on with a t-shirt and it looked really winter, like, sorry, it looked really weekend casual, but you could absolutely wear this with a blouse tucked in and it would look really work appropriate as well. It's just that because they're dry clean, I wouldn't want to wear them to work because they'd be at the dry cleaners all the time. So those are the trousers. I'm going to link in the description below, not to, well, I might try and link to the deal stuff if I can find it on the website. I'm going to link below to my lipstick and also this shirt that you've seen before. This is from Lily Silk. They gave me this, by the way, quite a few months ago. I just like wearing their shirts. They're really like comfortable. Um, and I think at the moment, I think they've got a promotion that's on. I was looking this morning because I also buy a lot from them. I buy a lot of work shirts. I'm gonna be doing a workwear video actually coming up because 
it's September, back to work. Anyone who's graduated, you might be like starting a new job. Um, and I think that's everything. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.